the F-16. It's it's a, a 1970s era plane, but it's still quite potent. Yes. Of course, uh, tell me again, as a, as a non-military guy, my understanding is, I think we've discussed this as, as near, a year ago, everything moving in and out of Ukraine on a military level is picked up by Russian satellites. Yes. Whether it be trains bringing in tanks or ammunition. Yeah. Wet from Poland or any other neighboring states. How are the F-16s going to get into Russia? In, I'm sorry, into Ukraine. They're going to fly them well, in? It depends on where they lift off from. I mean, right now we think the Su-24s that fired the Storm Shadow missiles left airfields on the very edge of western Ukraine. In other words, near Lvov or Lviv, as they call it. The Austrians called it Lembeck back before 1918. Western Ukraine has some air airstrips, several of them. So if you lift off from that distance, then try to evade the radar for some period of time, fly low, whatever the answer happens to be, you then can get into central Ukra Western Ukraine and launch your missiles and disappear before you're going to be shot down. Hmm. And that's what they did with the Su-24s. Now, I'm sure that the Russians have since then looked at all of these airstrips and airfields in the West. I would be very surprised if we do not wake up at some point and discover that they've all been vaporized. But and again, the Russians will target the airstrips in Western Ukraine. Yes. But I think the Russians have once again exercised restraint. They said, look, if we destroy everything right up to the border, we always risk another confrontation with NATO. This is Putin. This is where Putin has intervened and held back. So Putin's sort of the almost a, a, a dove by what you're saying. He's like a peacenik. Well, compared with everybody else that could replace him, I would say absolutely. And who, remember, who would replace him? Let's. I mean, we've been hearing he's senile. He had neurological uh, diseases. He was dying of kidney disease. He was in a nut house. He was on his last legs two years ago. All propaganda all the time. And here he is looking better than ever. Uh, so now we're going to hear that he's uh, a warmonger, when in fact you're saying the opposite, that he's actually a dove. Well, he wants, he understands that when you fight a war, you fight for specific reasons, but one of the things you don't want to do is destroy the potential for future conflict resolution. In other words, you, you want to end the war in a way where you're not permanently poisoning the waters against your former adversaries. Uh -huh. he, he wants to be able to do business with the West. He's not interested in invading Europe. If anybody who looked at the Soviet state structure knew that putting Russian forces on the ground in Eastern Europe was a disaster. It cost a lot of money. There was no real return on the investment. It was not a good money maker, and it poisoned the populations against them. But this is the neocon, Colonel. This is the neocon party line uh, since this war began. Putin wants to reestablish the ex-Soviet Union. If we don't stop him in Ukraine, he will next take over Poland and the Baltic states. And then he will take over the world. But it is it, still prevalent. You still see it on the Internet. Well, you remember not very long ago, we had people say the same thing about Iraq. If we don't fight them in Iraq, we'll be fighting them in Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. Right. We'll fight them on our streets. Don't you remember Lyndon Baines Johnson in 1966, 67? You can listen to the tapes. Well, you know, as well as I do, if we don't fight them over there, they're going to come here. Well. You know, I, I could just see all these Arabs loading up in canoes and paddling <laughs> their way to North America. Well, the, Mexi the, the Mexicans are fighting us on the streets here. They're killing our police at a pretty uh, hefty pace. Well, yeah, but we invited them, remember? We have to stand up to this naked aggression today and deter other would-be aggressors tomorrow. That's why the United States, together with our allies and partners around the world, will continue to stand with the brave people of Ukraine as they defend their sovereignty and territorial integrity and their freedom. We have an election cycle, presidential election. It's a matter of question whether Biden will even make it to the finish line or drop out. I think they're getting ready to force him to uh, to, to drop out and, and have Newsom take over. That's my my best guess is they're going to move Newsom into the lead and he's going to run and probably win. That's my guess right now, by the way. Uh, which is a separate issue. But given that we're into an election cycle, the Democrats don't want this war to get worse before an election, do they? It depends. I uh -huh. mean, I think it matters. Uh-huh. I mean, thus far, has it mattered? No.
It's back to the question we raised before about the average American doesn't feel the effects. Well, if they'd elect <laughs> Fetterman wearing dirty shorts and a T-shirt. <laughs> Do you remember you remember when Newt Gingrich uh, got into a fight with Bill Clinton and shut down the government? Why? Well, yeah. Yeah, I, I was there. I remember this. And I re remember watching someone interview this young man on a bicycle in, in San Francisco, and he had a case of beer strapped to the back of his bicycle. And they said, sir, sir, will you talk to us? He said, sure. He said, what do you think about the government shutdown? He said, well, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, why? He said, well, aren't you concerned about it? And he said, well, it doesn't really affect me. Right. That's the way the average person thinks. It's the same in Germany, for example. They just had a gathering of thousands of people wearing dog masks who consider themselves human dogs. This is in Germany. Yeah. You have Africans rioting in Stuttgart for yeah. not being given enough welfare. Yeah. W where is the backbone of, of Germany? Where did well, it go? It, it was largely destroyed in the Second World War. And in the years since the Second World War, we have scrupulously re-educated them to feel oh. perfectly guilty for everything that was wrong and everything that happened. You know, it's back to this discussion of the Second World War. No one ever brings up Stalin. No one talks about what Stalin and Bolshevism did. Mm. Focus exclusively on Hitler, Hitler, Hitler. He's everything. We don't tell the truth about Europe and fascism and why it grew and, and came to power. We just ignore all of that. We have a, a very myopic, one-dimensional view of everything. And by the way, we also think we won the war. We don't bother to point out that we were one of several parties that were fighting the war. And, you know, the Ukrainians have now lost more men killed in the last 19, 20 months than we lost in the entire Second World War. It's hard to fathom that the average person doesn't understand it. And moreover, they don't care. They just don't care. But going into an election cycle, I would think, but I could be wrong, as you just expressed, maybe uh, they like war. War is very bad for the Democrat Party. 50% of Republicans don't want the war. What percent of the Democrats want the war to end? I don't know. Do you have any data on that? Um, no, but I think that unless uh, we are stupid enough and foolish enough to commit U.S. ground forces to Western Ukraine, nothing will change in the short run because those ground forces would come under fire and Americans would be killed. And if Americans were killed, what would the response be in the United States? Well, outrageous. More war. No, you know, who did this? Why is this happening? Evil they Russian. Shouldn't, they shouldn't even be there. The average American doesn't know where it is. I mean, I tell people all the time, I spent years in graduate school and subsequently studying Central East Europe. People don't understand the Ukraine. They don't know what went on there for hundreds of years. They don't understand the Russians. Come on. This is ridiculous. What are we doing there? We're making it worse. That's what we're doing. And we need to stay out of these things. Do you think this is going to end or it's going to get worse? It's a coin. It's a coin. Okay. Boss, but I think, you know, I think in the short run, it'll get worse. Hmm. In the long run, I think the other factors that we have been discussing will have a mitigating impact. And I think the, there will be a recognition that we just can't afford to involve ourselves in a direct front confrontation.